So the question I was just asking you to think about was when they give you the equation of a graph, they give you the graph, sorry, not the equation of the graph, and then what they want you to do is to actually find the equation of it yourself. So it says here, here is a sketch of the curve C with equation y equals f of x. The equation of the curve C can be written in this form here. Well, we kind of knew it could be written in this form here. How did I know it was going to be written in this form? Because? Because there's three roots. And what about the shape of it? What's the shape of this graph? It's a positive cubic graph. So we can already make a bit of prediction about what this value of a is going to be. We know it's going to be a positive number because this type of cubic that we can see here is obviously a positive one. And so we're going to try and find out what the equation of this is ourselves in this particular form. But in order to do that, what do you think some of the most important information to read from the graph? The roots and the y-intercepts. So the roots that we've got here, if we identify it from the graph, the roots are that x is minus 4, x is minus 1, and x is 2. So what do we think that the graph might be if I was going to say it was a y equals kind of graph? Jamil, do you think you could say what you think that should look like? Would it be y equals x plus 4, x plus 1, x plus 2? x plus 4, x plus 1, x minus 2. That's what we think that the graph should be. But you told me there were two important things on this graph. You told me about the intercepts, uh, the roots, and the y-intercept. So let's just see if this works no. with the y-intercept. It doesn't work with the y-intercept. Because the y-intercept here, it's a bit difficult to see, is minus 16. So if x was 0, we want y to be equal to 16. But is y equal to 16 when we do no. this? No. And the reason why is because we haven't quite written out this graph properly here. If you think about what it said, it says that the graph is in the form y equals ax cubed plus bx squared, etc., etc. And at the moment, what have I said that the a is here? Yes? One. Yeah, I said that a is 1. Because if you imagine multiplying out the x, you would have 1x cubed. So what I really need to do here is I need to add at the beginning an a to represent the fact that I don't know what a is going to be. You can probably guess what a is going to be from thinking it logically, but sometimes that value of a is not going to be very simple. Sometimes that value of a might be a fraction, in which case it's a bit trickier to guess. So we're much better to write it in with an a there. So we don't know what this a coefficient is, so we're going to leave it outside the front, and then we're going to see if we can figure out what those different coefficients are. So now I've said that x is equal to 0, and y is equal to 16 because of this intercept we have down here. I'm just going to substitute everything in. Amina, did you have a question? Oh, sorry, you're right. It is negative 16. It should be negative 16 because I've misread it from the graph here. The y-intercept is negative 16. So we'll have negative 16 equals a. And then if x is 0 in all of these places, we're going to have 4 times 1 times minus 2. So that is negative 16 is equal to how much a? Minus 8a. Minus 8a, which tells me that a is equal to 2. So we know that the equation of the graph is y equals 2, x plus 4, x plus 1, x minus 2. And I made this question up. And so the way I made this question up is I literally typed this in to Desmos to be able to get this graph, because I knew I was fully in control of what this graph was going to look like. I knew what the roots were going to be, and I knew that I wanted there to be an extra bit at the beginning. But that's not what the question's asked for. Khadija, what's different about what we have here and what the question wants? Say that a bit louder, please has to be expanded. Yeah, if you look at this form we've got here, it's in a non-factorized form. So I want you to have a go at expanding this. Do you remember doing triple brackets in GCSE? Mm. Yeah. So how do you do a triple bracket for that? First, you do the first two first. And yep. That, do, do you have to do the first two first? No, you no. can do it different you, you, could do, you could do any of them in any order. So I want you to just try that yourself. I'm going to do this now on the board. Have you done it already? Yeah. OK. Yeah, ask, what's your question? Yeah. First, yeah. So can I just times all of that by two? You could just times all of that by two. I would just be careful um, without 
without putting the A in there, because if the question has an A in here, there has to be an A in here. If you'll do some questions in the exercise where there is no A in front of it, in which case you can just go straight in and just put it in with the roots. Okay, Jamil? So could you just times x plus 4 by 2 and then multiply it out? You could. I personally, if I was going to say the way that I would do this, I would do this one times this one to start with. Then I would do that result times that result. And then, at the end, I would just double everything. That's, that's the way I would do it. I just find it slightly easier to do that doubling stage at the end. So I'm going to try that out. So it's going to be 2 multiplied by, well, that's going to be x squared plus 5x plus 4. Then I'm going to multiply all of this by x. And then I'm going to multiply it all by minus 2. And I'll simplify. And then I'll double it. And whilst you finish doing that expanding, I'm going to type it on Desmos and see if we get exactly the same graph that I've just got there, okay? So that's 2, 6, minus 12, minus 16. Okay, I will let you copy that down in just a second, but I'm just going to show you on Desmos really quick. So on Desmos, if my board unfreezes so you guys can see, it doesn't look the same, but it has got the same features. Why does it look different? Because it's, it's there because of the cube in the <coughs> No. It's zoomed in in a different way. If you look at the axes I've got here, it's going from minus 20 to 20 and 20 to minus 20. But if you go back here, the axes here are from 20 to minus 20, but I've stretched these out, so it's going from minus 4 to 2. So I've just kind of zoomed in in a different kind of way. I've kind of like stretched in on it in a different way. But it still has the features of crossing at minus 4, minus 1, and 2, and it crosses on the y-axis at minus 16. Okay? This process of what we did here, I've only got you one example of doing it with a cubic. It will also work for the next exercise that we do when we're going to be doing it with cortex. So when I do, uh, we're going to move on and do some stuff with cortex now, and then we'll throw in some of these questions to try in just a moment. Okay.